The hat of love. Hey! Is the hat of love the thing or what? I John, mean, John. who wouldn't give this man a lift or what? Oh! Once again, thank you so much for your beeping. Yay! No! We're not getting this hard, and hitting is always no. hard. After three hours, their perseverance pays off. They've got a lift halfway to Montreal, but the weather is deteriorating fast. The driving conditions are extremely treacherous, as they are about to find out. Tools and walking in a, lot, a straight line, maybe 200 metres. Oh! Travelling too fast for the icy conditions, Paul and Mag's car lurches into a skid. For a few terrifying seconds, the driver completely lost control. Had rather a large crash then. I wouldn't Good have driving. cared if I was alone, but when somebody else is with me, I try not to take anybody else. <laughs> we have faith in you, Paulie. I don't like driving in snowstorms. <laughs> I must admit, I'm not too happy about you driving in snowstorms either. <laughs> a huge blizzard is sweeping up the coast from the south. Snow plows are struggling to keep the road open, but as two feet of snow are expected to fall, the road will eventually be closed. James and Sarah are 200 miles ahead of the others. We're going to hit some snow bad, probably. Yes. They hope they can make it through before the road is shut. Paul and Mags make it as far as Les Escumins, which is halfway to Montreal. But that's it for the night. The road is closed. Hmm. It was when they last checked. You never know. Nobody said it was supposed to be easy, though, did they? They get straight to work in the town's motel, trying to secure a lift for when the road reopens. When their story suddenly appears on the evening news, their fellow stranded travellers share their excitement. <laughs> 200 miles behind, Ray and Sue are in Setil, where the road is still open. After three hours trying to get a lift, they've met up with David, who has heard about the lost race on the radio. That's it. I, I, I thought it was a damn ridiculous, you know, that the guys dropped up in the North Shore blast up now in the snow. Jeez, that was weird. Boy! Crazy people. Yeah, they're crazy. You know, got to be crazy. Which news did you hear? Was it last night or this, today? I think it was last night. I think it was, it was last night? I think it was, yeah. Shortly after leaving, the storm hits. Bad. On the North Shore, this is bad. I'm just uh, going with my uh, knowledge of this road, and that's all. It's frightening. I've never seen it so bad. If you could see what was around you, you'd see it was bad. Yeah. There's a cliff on my right and the water on my left side. So uh, we're in the middle of uh, nowhere right now. While they continue driving through the night, back at the motel in Les Escumins, Paul and Mags are getting five-star treatment since their TV appearance. They are being wined and dined by the manager. This is Pierre, the proprietor. Drum roll. <laughs> then Mags gets a phone call from a complete stranger with an incredible offer. Uh, I'm Montreal, California. Oh, no. I'm 
We've got a guy called Francois on the phone. He says that he's ready to drive from Montreal to California, especially for us, so that we are the winning team. It is absolutely incredible. He's just rung up. I don't even know how he knows we're at this restaurant. It just seems like the whole world knows where we are and what we're doing. You've got to wonder what kind of person has all this time and says, oh, you know what? I think I'll go 5,000 miles across down in my car, just for a laugh. <laughs> to celebrate their good fortune, a local school choir puts on a special recital for them. Paul and Mags are confident. They know that no traffic has made it south since the road closed, and they have seen no sign of the other teams. While they hole up for the night in Les Escumins, Ray and Sue almost catch up. The storm stops them only 30 miles behind at Forestville. But James and Sarah succeed in beating the storm and make it as far as Freilichsburg, 300 miles further on. Hi there, we want to find out about trains going from Montreal to New York City. Today, if possible. Oh, shit, has it? Today's train from Montreal to New York has already gone. But as James is convinced they have a substantial lead, he's not that worried. Yeah, that's great. Thanks a lot. Bye. Well, there we go. We're in good shape. So we can either... I mean, that's... That is good. We can either hitch from Montreal or get a train tomorrow morning. That's your best deal, guy. Take it easy, relax, enjoy the train. Mm. Have a martini on the rocks there, choo, choo, choo. <laughs> <laughs> and I can, yeah. I'm, you know, I can, I can get an injection of cash once we get to, um, once we get to New York as well. We'll be in New York by tomorrow night. If we can get a train from New York, New York to Denver, maybe to Boulder or something. I can see if I can persuade someone to drive from LA to Denver. That's a long way. It's about a thousand miles. Mm -hmm. But they could probably fly there, rent a Winnebago, and then go from there. Or drink. With their great train plan in place, they have the rest of the day to relax. Are we? Are you being nice to me? My God, this is the most affectionate you've been the whole time. You must be in a good mood. Don't worry, it won't last. It's team bonding. <laughs> Three days. In the petrol station. Ray and Sue are now only 20 minutes behind Paul and Mags. Their driver, Philippe, is going all the way to Montreal. Nice. Right. How are you feeling? Do you know, that's the first bloody time you've asked me since I've been here. I know, I just thought... Uh, I'm only asking how you are. Considering the fact that we slept together twice. <laughs> it's three times, actually. Is it three times? It's third time. Oh, my God. I keep getting a little ner nervous thing in the morning. Why? I don't know, like a giddy, giddy feeling in my stomach. It's like a funny, like, first date or you, you're just about to take an exam or you're just about to perform on stage in your school play. It's just like, a really nervous feeling. I get that every morning. The bottom line on it, Sue, is uh, we've had our ups and we've had our downs. It's well, not we have, we've, we've had our downs, we've had quite a few downs. Do you reckon? It downs off like as soon as we find out where the other teams are. <laughs> we, 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 we just go quiet. <laughs> yeah, it's like a... Mm. Just ahead of them, Paul and Mags are also being driven to Montreal. Andre, a local businessman, not only gives them a lift, but takes them to his office so they can contact the mysterious Francois, who offered to drive them to Los Angeles. Well, yes, Bonsoir, est-ce que Francois est là? Ah, bon, ça va? Bonsoir, c'est Max. Oui, euh, nous sommes arrivés à... Euh, nous, nous avons arrivé à Montréal. Oui. Est-ce que c'est -ce est, est, um, encore um, d'accord pour, pour le voyage? Ah. Mags is having difficulties understanding François. So hands the phone over to Andre. Mon nom c'est Mon nom c'est André. 
Euh, moi, j'ai pris les gens euh, au Cap de la Madeleine. Je, je, je les ai montés à, à Montréal. OK. OK. Bye. He's very disappointed because he called his boss last night and he's uh, getting back to work Wednesday. Oh, so disappointing. Back to square one. Okay, I'm sorry for you. Mm. Very sorry. <laughs> Andre drives a very dejected team round to the apartment of one of Paul's old friends who happens to live in Montreal. Mm -hmm. I know it's a downer that we've been dropped by Francois, big time. Um, but it's just an emotional roller coaster. The whole thing of me all today. We're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sure we're in front, but uh, most of the time we were. At been... least they have a place to crash out and recover from the setback. How are you? Good. Welcome to Canada. <laughs> Thank you again. Max, right? <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Sabrina, so much. I I was waiting for you guys. I'm gonna go. Do you want beer? Do you want wine? What do you want to eat? What do you want to drink? Before they can relax. They must come up with a new plan. One of the reasons we're in this spot, the primary reason, is because we didn't sit down. Yeah, no, as we discussed before, as we, you know, remember we discussed it in the beginning. Let's sit down and have a strategy, and we did. I agree with the strategy of we can't hitch from one small hick. Yeah, you're right. It makes sense. Yeah. yeah. On the other side of town, Ray and Sue are on a roll. They've managed to get a lift to Toronto, 240 miles west, which puts them in the lead. Oh, I can't believe I love. After being dropped, they test their luck further by seeing if they can blag a free meal. But they receive a cool reception from the manager. Can you like turn that off, please? Yep. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Um, not so, I'm not, uh, I'm not at liberty to be able to give you anything for anyone. Like fries or anything. Unfortunately, no. that's the policy. Okay. They fail to get a free meal, but manage to negotiate a free room for the night. They may be hungry, but at least they have two king-sized beds. Three continental breakfasts as well. Buoyed by their success, Ray goes to reception to call the local radio station. Let me get this right. You're, you're hoping that one of my listeners will offer to give you a lift to Detroit. That's right, yeah. Wow. Oh, L.A., that's, I mean, that's our LA. point of destination, yeah. <laughs> Initially, we have to get to L.A., and then our tickets are waiting for us to get a flight back to U.K., and it's the first team back to the U.K. wins the competition. Really? Yeah. Interesting. Indeed. Well, I think you're going to be S.O.L. on that, my friend. S.O.L.? Yeah. What does that mean? Get out of luck. 